Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland Love every racing moment Visit hri.ie Thanks very much to Patrick Mullins for talking to us there. Whisked away by the stewards uh, after winning on Billaway. What a week Patrick has had winning the bumper as well on Fasal Vega in a completely different, very, very easy manner uh, to that of Billaway. JD, you had to be impressed with that ride by Patrick and the Fox Hunters. Not really, because the back swings later. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I know you were moaning earlier on in the week that your tips hadn't been going great, but I think we can all relate to, to that problem. But um, has it improved? Uh, unless Adam and Lee chose and wins the last, it won't. <laughs> yeah, but that's, this is this is the way. I mean, that must have been a long, long hill for you. Uh, it was, but look, I was trying to get Rachel Blackmore and Henry de Bramhead at the time, so I was looking through the corner of my eye. But uh, my top stories are not really important here this week, Johnny. What's important is uh, ten winners for Willie Mullins, and the most important thing is Rachel Blackmore has won both the Champion Hurdle and the Gold Cup. Indeed, 10 winners for Willie Mullins. Just start with that. Uh, you know, it's, it's an absolutely incredible tally, nearly up there with, um, you know, it's obviously record break and he could have uh, six out of seven winners today. What more can be said about the man, I suppose? Nothing. The gentleman, uh, he's been at the game a long time. His first winner was Tourist Attraction back in 1995 at Cheltenham and it took him a while to get going, but once he got the big owners into his yard and then once he could prove with the ammunition that he had that he was able to train at the very, very top level. It's just flowed from there. Obviously, Ruby Walsh was a huge part of the yard and still is. But Paul Tennant, a very able replacement. And I think you've said it already to Patrick, it took them until the last race, the first day with Stasher to win. Like we had on Galapond de Champs, he should have won. It should be 11 winners. And that's over a third of the winners of the 28 races here at the Chatham Festival. It's an incredible achievement. And it's, it's, it's up there now as manager of the year or sports star of the year, uh, obviously behind Rachel. And that's the mad thing, actually. Like the most impressive of Willie Moore, Mullins performer this week didn't even win. Yeah, it's, it's strange. Uh, and look, thankfully the horse was sound, Galapon de Champs, and there's so much potential in him. Either at two miles, which I go back to now, or over the Gold Cup. Like he could win a champion chase, he could win the Gold Cup. He is that special. But obviously, the thing is to keep them sound. But a great day for Willie today, uh, from State Man to Vauban to the Nice Guy to Billaway. Uh, to Eddie May and maybe in the last as well so just an absolute Beano and he's uh, a great representative for the sport I find uh, he's gentleman Willie Mullins and um, we, we're in good hands as Irish uh, racing fans with Willie on side and Rachel on side Absolutely and um, I just uh, it's my contrast Gordon Elliott he's had a couple of winners um, but he's had obviously a frustrating week and you certainly wouldn't begrudge he, Noel and Valerie Moore in a victory in the last uh, in the shape of Hollow Games Absolutely not and uh, you, you definitely did they put so much money into the game and obviously support the game that they, they would deserve a winner completely. So, look, sometimes it's not your week. Johnny, uh, there was a couple of years ago that Willie didn't have a winner, I think, until Thursday. Sometimes things go wrong, and but that's what the beauty about it is, that you go again, you, you get up the next day and you give it another shot. So, look, Gordon, I'm sure he'll be back uh, in the winner's enclosure here soon, even though he was there twice earlier this week, you know. Yeah, and Thursday uh, saw a toe tend to follow fairy tale at Cheltenham with Danny Mullins winning on his own selection, Flooring Porter. What a brilliant ride by Danny. And he scooped 58 additional 10 to follow points. Still wasn't enough to overtake me and uh, maintain my lead going into the final day of the festival. And we will um, update you with the figures there. So, yeah, my lead has been absolutely decimated. I'm 588.97. Pa- uh, Danny's on 530.98. And Jer kind of languishing there in third, 373.87. But uh, respectable. But uh, JD, it's got to got to the main talking point of the day which is obviously Rachel Blackmore I have to say I did not predict this performance she was beaten by Galvin at Leopardstown at Plutard was beaten by Galvin he was beaten in the race last year by Manella Indo he left them for dead what happened? I think what happened was and I backed to Plutard and tipped in the last two years and I didn't this year uh, I think the Plutard has improved mm. uh, I, I think last year he won that race at Leopardstown which was probably uh, the, the most furious gallop of all time remember when he overhauled Mellon and uh, Kenboy in straight under Darrow O'Keefe uh, and it was in soft ground. I think that might have left a mark in him. Mm. He came back this year, he won so impressively at Haydock, and then maybe the yard wasn't in the best to make at Christmas uh, when he got chinned by Galvin in the Savile's chase. Uh, he's been left off since then, uh, and I just feel that he has just come into his own as very much the class horse. And with the class horses in the Gold Cup, you know they're going to travel. The question is, will they stay? And two, twice here in chases, uh, he didn't get up the hill in the Ryanair or the Gold Cup to win. But today he did. And I think Rachel gave it a very clever ride. A bit like Paul Townend and Ergaman. She put him to sleep. Uh, she then produced him later. 
because I think last year uh, Pluttard was kind of up with the pace and, and jumping not the most fluently. I think it almost was spent by the time uh, Manella and Doe took the, the race by the scruff of the neck under Jack Kennedy. Robbie Power tried to do the same again today, but a Plutard this time had been put to bed a bit more. And then Rachel just uh, pushed the button and then the reaction was just absolutely fantastic. The roar was incredible. 15 length win. That is a championship performance. And Rachel has won the champion hurdle twice now in the last year of the Grand National. But this is the Blue Ribbon. This is the most prestigious race in horse racing, the Gold Cup and over, over jumps and National Hunt and uh, the first ever Lady Rider to win her. I know she plays then the Lady Rider element of it, but it is still a landmark. Yeah, and I think within racing probably we, we, we do kind of, we're, we're used to it at this stage. I guess it's more um, what she's doing in terms of a legacy for others. As Patrick mentioned, JD, like he beat Shaq and Poursois by three and three quarter lengths at Leopardstown over an extended two miles in 2019. So there is a kind of a... Um, there is like a, almost a bit of a Koto star about the performance today that he was able to to win the Gold Cup. How much would you put it down, as you mentioned, to the way that she put him to sleep? Because it's never ideal, you know, riding a horse that you think might be outstayed. Big time. Uh, it, it takes a lot of guts. And I think Rachel said in the press conference afterwards, Johnny, that uh, she didn't want to be blamed for doing something different. And she wouldn't blame herself for doing something different. So why not do something different? And, and that's exactly what happened. Because Manella Indo in a way kind of ran the same type of race mm. he did last year uh, Robbie Power took him up uh, and uh, Robbie probably would have felt confident enough that he had the, the petrol to replenish all challengers but this time Rachel had a bit more the horse definitely has improved from 7 to 8 8 is generally a ripe age for Gold Cup winners and that's what we've seen I know it's a French bread but this, this is a blue tar probably at its peak next year or the year after maybe, maybe not but right now I think the horse is just absolutely at its peak and that's what we saw and like the Honeysuckle ride, she rode with supreme confidence. And that's what winning big races does. And she's right up there at the top of every jockey. So, look, I know there's an inside baseball that we don't discuss. And I haven't really even thought about it this week, that she's a lady rider. Mm. But for the wider public, it is still a really, really big deal. Because this is the week when horse racing's on the front and the back pages. So for Rachel from Killing All and Tipperary, and for Henry de Bramhead, the Waterford trainer, it's a, it's, a, it's a great win. It's just a really great win for Ireland and uh, with many years, Johnny, when we didn't have many Gold Cup winners, and we can we should be savoring every one. I mean, I landed up with a blue turn last year, and it was the role reverse today. Yeah, and like if you were to coldly analyze it, like in the in this past twelve months and two days or whatever it is, Henry de Bromhead has won two champion hurdles. He's had two one twos in the Gold Cup, and he's won a Grand National. Now get your head around that. Absolutely, I'm sure he's probably trying to get his head around it as well, Johnny, because. There was a time 14 years ago I was here size in Europe was favourite for the champion hurdle and I had a problem and I was pulled up. Mm. And, and Henry had some dark days. He was like, he the past horses in this yard and they were moved uh, at one stage. And, you know, Henry has had to really, you know, battle and, and, and prove himself and get the good owners like Chibi Parks, who own the Clutard and uh, Barry Maloney from uh, Manila Indo. So, okay, Henry has always been a really good, I, I feel, trainer of jumpers, getting horses to jump almost in an old-fashioned style. Like, it's all about the, the technique. And that's what you see. You don't see bad jumpers out of Henry de Bromhead's yard. You really see really good jumper, jumpers. Like, back to Fisher Seal in the 90s, wasn't it? Harry de Bromhead, his dad. And Charlie Swan, I think it was, who rode him that day. I think it was in 1993 to win, uh, might have been the pretemps back then. But um, it's in the family. Uh, you know, he did his apprenticeships around the block, uh, Henry. Uh, always a gentleman, and I'm delighted for him. Yeah, let's actually hear now from the trainer, Henry de Bromhead. He was talking earlier to JD. Henry de Bromhead last year was Manella Indo and a Plutard this way the other way round what a fantastic day for you a Gold Cup winner yeah unbelievable John yeah delighted uh, Rachel was brilliant on APT he ran an absolute cracker she was very brave coming down the hill she said she was going to ride him for speed this year and that's what she did I uh, thought Robbie was brilliant on Indo he ran a blinder and um, yeah look it's, it's stuff you dream of You've been in this game a long time, so when you win a Gold Cup like you did last year, when you win it again, you're not going to take it for granted. No, certainly not. You know, I thought coming over, I was going, it'll be typical now. We won all these races last year with no one here, and I'll flunk complete, completely this year. But thankfully, we've um, we've done really well, and to win win these races is just you know stuff you dream of. Word for Rachel, the first ever lady rider to win a Gold Cup. Oh, I'm delighted for her. She's an amazing rider, uh, brilliant to work with, true professional, and uh, feel very lucky to be involved with her. Do you feel you had the best horse in the race with the Plutar? 
I never feel that. You know, it was such a competitive race. There were so many in there. Um, you know, Indo is, is, is as good. You know, he's a brilliant horse as well. And there are so many others. So, no, I certainly didn't. But just hope that they'd give a good account of themselves and they'd have a bit of luck. How are you going to celebrate this in Waterford? Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to go to the rugby tomorrow anyhow, so I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully uh, the English can beat the French and that'll give us a good chance uh, with, you know, to win the whole thing. So I'm really looking forward to that and uh, we'll see what happens between now and then. Triple crowns all round, Henry, and maybe a few drinks. Absolutely, absolutely. Looking forward to it. I don't know, Judy. I mean, it, this is the stuff of dreams when you consider, as you mentioned as well, he had that kind of um, rather acrimonious split with the pots. Um, and Henry de Bromhead, around the time of the size in Europe days, you know, he was only kind of coming on the scene. He's just become like a really, really top trainer in the last few years. It's all about the ammunition. And uh, if you can get the ammunition that Henry's got, like a Plutar, like Manella Indo, like Put the Kettle on, and then Manella Times, who won the Grand National. If you, if you can prove that you, you can do it with the ammunition, like you know, he did it with Size in Europe. I think Size in Europe was a really important horse for Henry de Bramhead, the champion chase winner, really, really good jumper. And I think he put him on the map. Uh, and, and it's just a case of owners trusting you. Once you have the owners to trust you and, and, and have a good relationship with them, and that, that can be underpaid sometimes. And William Mullins is very good at that, having that relationship with the owners, that they can trust you to deliver on the biggest stage. And he's gone and done it. Like It is an incredible training performance to have the first two in the Gold Cup two years in a row. How many times has that happened? I can't remember it happening. Yeah, and before we go to Rachel, JD, what was the reception like as the two of them came into the parade ring after? Uh, incredible. Well, first of all, in the ring, when, when Rachel jumped the last and started to power clear on a flute tar, it was absolutely sensational reception. Look, obviously, there's a degree of people who've had a bit of money on, but there's a people's champion element to it with Rachel. There's a, there's a popularity element to it. And then for her to come in, it was just a, a, a reception that raised the roof, as it were. And, uh, and thankfully, uh, we didn't need a, a roof today. It was such a beautiful, sunny day. So, uh, no, it was worthy of the, the significance of the victory for Rachel and Boutar. So, yeah, more power to them. Let's hear from the woman of the hour, Rachel Blackmore. Rachel Blackmore. To win the champion hurdle is one thing, but to win a gold cup, it's the most prestigious race in the sport. Oh, I just feel so incredibly lucky, to be honest. Uh, this is phenomenal. Like... It really, really is. Um, I'm a bit overwhelmed. Um, I really am. It's just incredible. Uh, it's, you know, it's not even 12 months ago that I was lucky enough to win a Grand National. Um, and Honeysuckle earlier this week was incredible. And this is just overwhelming. Talk to us about the race. Yeah, look, uh, he won. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> cool. Thank you. And just the reception you got. Uh, unbelievable the crowds here are just so special that's what this place is all about and to get cheered back in like that is just very very special yeah if you saw the documentary a grand year uh, about Rachel on RTE there not that long ago JD it's it's just been such an amazing story because I do I've said this a few times when she turned pro the amount of people who said to me what is she at she'll never do anything she's not done much as an amateur what is she turning pro look at her now well, Shark Hanlon, I think, was a, gave her a chance, didn't he, about seven years ago. And I think it was a, a phone call that Eddie O'Leary had with uh, Henry de Bromhead around Aintree a few years ago. Where he said, Why don't we give Rachel a shot? Uh, and to be fair to Eddie and Henry, they did. And they started putting her on the horses. Uh, I remember, uh, Chickens Town had a lot of horses at the time with Henry. And he just kind of began to motor from there. And uh, Plutar, I think, was one of our very first winners here at Cheltenham mm. uh, in, in a two-and-a-half-mile novice chase. Uh, so she's always had a great relationship with the horse. And like with all these things, uh, the, the, one thing that Ruby Walsh said last year was quite interesting. The disappointment in Rachel's uh, body language when Manella Indo passed the line in the Gold Cup and beat a Plutar, uh, it wasn't that she was happy to be second. She's a competitor. She wanted to be the best. And I think that now she's just in every way as equal as Ruby or Tony McCoy were you know, at the, and riding at these really top class races. And, it's not about gender, really. It's just about, are you the best person? It's mer meritocracy. And uh, Henry believed in her in that regard. And it's, there are very few sports where men and women compete equally. And she's uh, in, in the same sport. And she's, she's done it. So uh, I, I, I kind of feel a bit sorry for her in a way because, and I'm just one of these people, everybody's just trying to get, look, you, you tell us, tell us, tell us what happened. Tell mm. us, how does it feel? How does, tell me, tell me exactly right now. How does this feel, Rachel? You put it into words. And I don't think you know, for her, it's going to take a while for her to sink in for her. 
because it's just a whirlwind of, you know, there's a presentation, you're coming in, um, you're whisked off to do a load of media, and to actually let us give yourself some thought about it, it's going to take a while. And uh, I hope she gets that time to have a think about it. Yeah, because the, the strange thing was between Honeysuckle and Aplutard, like she'd had a lot of downs this week as well. Like, you know, tell me something, the girl being brought down, the horse and the bumper running away uh, with her. And, you know, she had to kind of take the good and the bad, I guess, of Cheltenham week. Well, it's like every shot in golf. You just have to forget about the last shot. And if you're, if you're, if you're dwelling on what happens, it's going to affect your riding. I think the good thing about it is, in a way, that you're only as good as your last race. And the races do come thick and fast every 40 minutes here. So it's almost like by the time you've had your photos and your, your trophy presentation, you know, you're changing your silks and you're getting on another one. And in a way, that can be a bit of a negative if you just won because you probably like to see, let it sink in and celebrate. But in, in a way, if you're sadly in the enclosure, you're on another one in a half an hour. And that's the good thing, that you've got new people to speak to, new connections, you've got new tactics to think about, and then you've got to go and deliver so that is a, one of the positives that it, it just comes so thick and fast, Chatham. It's a whirlwind from Tuesday at half one until Friday at half five, and uh, we're nearly done. Yeah, we did um, a feature ahead of the flat season as well with uh, Colin Keane, um, with uh, Ronnie Whelan, and also with uh, Siobhan Rutledge, which will um, be played, I think, I think it's next weekend. It's kind of a HRI uh, video in conjunction with, with OTB, but just was talking to Siobhan about this, JD. Like, we do need more uh, girls getting into racing in terms of not, not, not the kind of staff issue. It's 50-50 there, but we need more girls riding on the flat like Josephine Gordon and Holly Doyle in Britain. We need more Rachel Blackmores. And I don't know, like, does Rachel even know what she's done for, I think, women in sport here? Because whether she likes it or not, she's an absolute ambassador now. Absolutely. And uh, I, I think there have been many of those in the last, 12 months, uh, I, I keep on saying it uh, in, a, in a way, I'm not in a way, any way disparaging when I say that 2021 was the year of the woman in Irish sport mm. uh, with Rachel Blackmore, Kelly Harrington with the Olympic gold, um, with uh, Leona Maguire, Ellen Keane at the Paralympics and the Mead Ladies footballers and are probably leaving people out there. So look, Rachel, by her exploits, by her what she's doing is an ambassador in itself and she's so, so good with her time as well that I've heard all these great stories about her helping out with, uh, with people. So I, I'm, I'm sure that you know, what she's done today and what she's done on Honeysuckle on Tuesday will inspire anybody, you know, a young boy or a young girl, to go and uh, trace their dreams because that's what it is all about. For her, seven years ago, she would never have imagined, and that's not a cliche, she would never have imagined that she'd be riding winners of the Gold Cup, the champion hurdle and a Grand National within a space of 12 months. Just not sure she'll be on the late, late singing anytime soon, though. But I don't know what happened there because I've been in a bubble over here at Cheltenham. But um, was, it, was it Kelly Harrington? Singing yeah, I, d- I didn't see it, but apparently uh, she and John C. Riley were very, very impressive. So it's over to you, Rachel, if uh, if you want to go on the late, late and sing Raglan Road or whatever it is. It's over to you. Although I think Rachel might be a bit too self-effacing for that, JD. Well, um, I wouldn't know, but... Uh there was plenty of Raglan Road sung in the Guinness Village here this week, <laughs> I can tell you that, Johnny. Yeah, and on that, let's go back to Tuesday in Constitution Hill, which seemed a long time ago now. I'm sure it seems a very long time ago for you, but what a start of the week. Well, 22 lengths in a very, very fast time. Scream star. Uh, it's, it's not far off Golden Signet stuff. Uh, Barry Garrity was heavily involved in the horse at home. I think he was involved in the breeding of the horse. Michael Buckley owns it, uh, trained by Nicky Henderson, and... It would be uh, sensational if you saw uh, Constitution Hill now go to Punchestown and go and run in that champion hurdle. Um, maybe they shouldn't because I think the officers need to be kind of tenderly handled. Uh, but Constitution Hill is a horse that could be a champion chaser, could be a Gold Cup horse. And that's what Michael Buckley's ambition is. And with all these things, it's about keeping the horse sound. But he's so relaxed. He's such a relaxed individual, Constitution Hill. And uh, yeah, him himself and Gallup and Deschamps are two to be uh, put in the notebook. Yeah, well, actually, on both of them, I mean, in theory, they could end up running against each other in a champion chase at some time. But where would you go, firstly, with Constitution Hill, and where would you go with Gallop and Deschamps as a sophomore chaser next season? Well, do you put Constitution Hill over a fence straight away? Um, I, I'd be kind of tempted to do that. If you don't, then maybe you should be looking at the champion hurdle. All the Supreme Novice hurdle winners don't have a good record in the champion hurdle. Um, to me, I, I, I love the champion chase as a race, but the Gold Cup is still the Blue Ribbon. It's still the one you want to win. It's still the one that people look look upon. It's nearly 100 years old now, back to 1924. And I'd love to see uh, Gallop and Deschamps in the Gold Cup. Because I, he, all he does is gallop. And I don't see any evidence that he won't get the trip. 
and uh, I just hope that I think it was a good decision to run him in the two and a half mile this year because sometimes a three mile race can be a little bit tough on horses. Uh, but I, I really do feel that Gallop and Deschamps could be a Gold Cup horse in 2023. I, I, I'm the same. And like if, you know, some punters did have bad luck stories this week, um, this is pretty much as, as bad luck as it gets because I watched that fall a million times and he still hasn't made a mistake. No, Paul Tannen did nothing wrong. You know, because people say, oh, he should have popped it. But Gallop and Deschamps has been running in a certain way. And I really feel that he did nothing wrong. He, he, he got him on a good stride and the horse just buckled. And maybe the fact that the ground was watered, I don't know if that's something to do with it. Mm. But the ground was definitely kind of gluey and soft. So it just might be a case that he just caught, caught a piece of ground and, and, and it just was unlucky. I just really think he was unlucky, you know. What did you make of Shishkin? I think that was one of the low points of the week. A horse who's never been beaten if you backed him pulling up in the champion chase. Uh, Nicky Henderson initially blamed the ground, but uh, what did you make of it? Well, the horses can't talk. It's a bit like Mr. Edge, you know, uh, Johnny. Mm. <laughs> he could talk, but the, the horses can't. And uh, that would be leaving a kind of a mysterious uh, situation about Shishkin because I, I really feel that he never was interested in, in, in doing it, you know. So it, it's, uh, it's a strange one. Uh, you, you can blame the ground. You can blame whatever you want. But it's just, it's just a case of uh, it not being right on the day. But I did make the point uh, many, many times that... Uh, maybe that race at Ascot left a mark. Mm. Left a mark on Alcior and uh, Suriname a couple of years ago, and maybe it left a mark on Siskin and Nergman, and Nergman obviously didn't leave a mark because he won the race. But, uh, yeah, they're coming to the last here in the um, Martin Pipe Hurdle, which is the last race of the week. So I think you were talking about Hollow Games there, weren't you? And he's, uh, yeah, he's, the Hollow Games is going to do this, I think, Johnny. I think it's Banbridge, unfortunately. You've mixed up the colours, JD, which, is yeah, exa- I, which you didn't do at all during the Clarence House race that you mentioned. Banbridge has just won under Mark McDonough. Well, there you go. So that's 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 my eyesight that needs to be checked out in Specsavers next week. Yeah, if you remember, um, if you remember, JD did the, the commentary on that epic Shishkin um, race against uh, Honor Jamin in the Clarence House. And to be fair to Honor Jamin, uh, you can only beat what's in front of you, JD, and he was pretty sublime himself. Joseph O'Brien with the last winner of the week, and it's a clean sweep of Irish winners on the final day of the Chapman Festival. It's a greenwash, Johnny. It, is, it a, is a greenwash. It is a greenwash. And just to mention Flooring Porter as well, before we go, JD, um, you know, jockey, trainer, horse and whatever, I, I thought this this performance had an awful lot going for it. Well, Banbridge is just a 12-1 to winner of the last race there. So 18 Irish winners, 10 for the UK. You mentioned an Um I think it was a pretty clever ride by Paul Townend, especially on that ground. And Flooring Porter... Uh, have you kind of jumped in as a bandwagoner in the syndicate heads of the West there? Uh, well, again, like, unfortunately, I'm not there. But, I mean, there was I watching the, uh, you know, all the clips. And there's none other than James Gehill holding lads aloft and uh, celebrating as if he'd won an All-Ireland. Well, look, um, Galway don't win All-Ireland all very often. Um, and 2017 was a great year. But, obviously, I think James Gehill's uncle was involved in mm. some way in the horse. And, uh, look, it was just a great story. Uh, like, the horse was bought for a, a song off Facebook and uh, it, it really is fairy tale stuff and you talk about Rachel you talk about inspiring young, younger people to, to pick up the sport and young girls hopefully this will inspire syndicates to get involved in the game because that is the lifeblood of the game is the syndicate it's it's the dream it's it's the uh, you know putting a, a couple of hundred quid in a month or a year or whatever you're putting in however big or small and then to be able to go to Cheltenham have the scarves around your, your you know your neck and, and see your horse win it can't get better than that, to be honest. Uh, and uh, ap- aptly named Florian Porter. Absolutely. Like, he did He did actually win last year. He won the very same race, but nobody was there. And there is an element of if the tree falls and there's nobody around to hear it, did to make a sound because they made a hell of a noise this year. What was your highlight before we wrap up? Uh, Rachel Blackmore is the highlight. It's mm. obvious. Like, it's the champion hurdle and the Gold Cup. They're the two biggest races of the week. And for her to win both with exceptional rides, you know, she steals the show and... Uh, you know, she's going to be probably the fourth star of the year again. So, well done, Rachel, and uh, well done, Cheltenham, on having another great week and uh, no controversy after two years and no crowds uh, last year. So, a, a normal Cheltenham, so normal service resumed. Are you coming home tonight? I know you're missing the show tomorrow. I'm coming home tonight on the um, Aer Lingus Express and uh, hoping to uh, get a bit of sleep tomorrow. And a bit like Henry de Bromhead, maybe I'll go to the rugby. Enjoy, J.D. 
Thanks, Johnny. Take care. Yeah, thanks a million to John Duggan. Thanks to Henry de Bromhead and to Rachel Blackmore as well for the interviews. And congratulations to both. Congratulations to Willie Mullins. He's won five races today. Mark McDonough having his first Cheltenham winner. Uh, lovely young lad. Uh, claims, I think he's claiming five or seven now. He obviously the big winner at Leopardstone over the Christmas. And he's just won on Banbridge uh, at Cheltenham as well. What a week for the Irish. 18-10. What a week for Rachel Blackmore. Friday Night Racing Off the Ball is brought to you by Horse Race in Ireland. Love every r- racing moment. Visit HRI. Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland Love every racing moment Visit hri.ie